Well, hello. <laughs> oh, it's a pleasure to be up here again speaking with you this Sunday as we do celebrate the creativity that is in this community and that has evolved with us over all the decades that we've been here from singers and previous strip performers to artists and other musicians. It's really been a pleasure to experience all of that in my time with CSL GLV. So today we're going to talk about what it's like to be a practitioner, what it's like to be a practitioner but not be a practitioner, <laughs> and what it means um, when we stumble a bit or feel as though we have. You know, some things just go together. Peas and carrots, peanut butter and jelly, two steps forward, and three steps back. <laughs> and in that three steps back part, that's where we think our upward journey, our golden spiral of spiritual awakening is toppled over onto its side or turned upside down because of things that are coming at us in all of these different ways. And whether we perceive them as negative or even too much positive, it can be something that's struggle to deal with. So life happens. We face challenges, old patterns, we hit roadblocks that seem to take us off course. And no matter what we plan and where we think we're going to be a month or five years or ten years from now, we never really know if that's what's going to happen because life happens. So when it feels as if we've lost ground, it's important to remember and to realize through practice and counsel that those moments are part of our natural course of individual spiritual awakening. And as a practitioner, I view these dips, or sometimes giant canyons, as a time when we get to make decisions. We slow down just enough. We get to choose. We get to choose to learn new things. And we have an opportunity for grace. So how do we go from hurt or anger or disappointment to looking at setbacks or life-changing experiences with dread and disappointment, to looking at them with gratitude, to looking at them with a willingness to learn. Oh, I got the blank one in the wrong spot. Practice, practice, practice is what the practitioner says. But there's a note behind that. There's something that we have to do first. And that is learn, learn, learn. Practicing is honing our craft, becoming more effective, more creative, and pushing the boundaries of our spiritual study. But learning, that's how we begin to understand. Learning is what opens those doors in our minds and allows us to see what's on the other side of those ideas that we have about what is negative or who is negative and what relationships we may struggle with. Learning is the beginning of everything. And speaking of beginnings, in 1926, Ernest Holmes published The Science of Mind. That stated that religious science is a combination of philosophy, science, and religion. The following year, he founded the Institute of Religious Science and Philosophy in Los Angeles a place where he could teach all those beautiful spiritual principles. It was never intended to be a church, but in 1949, the institute was reorganized as the Church of Religious Science, eventually becoming Centers for Spiritual Living. As I was putting this talk together, I was trying to think of an experience that I could share with you that I could use as an example of how my spiritual practice and understanding of principle helped me through a difficult situation. And I can tell you that I've realized through the last 12 years of study how I've gone from being someone who instantly reacts to those negative things that show up in front of me, not always in a good way, to someone who pauses and takes a breath and decides then in that moment whether or not or how I'm going to face them. Most things that happen, a job loss, uh, let's see, a disappointment in something that didn't come to fruition for me, 
maybe um, an illness or the transition of a family member or a friend. Those things, are they're big things. And there's always some sadness with them or grief. But as a practitioner, those things are not as big for me because I take the spiritual principles that I can apply to each one of those events and that's what my belief is. I understand the significance, the hurt, the pain, and the suffering around life's events. But I've realized just yesterday that most of those things are very small bumps in my spiritual journey only because I have the power of practice behind me. So the one thing that came about for me to talk to you today was something that happened a few years ago. It is a three steps back moment that was probably 20 steps back. And I don't often talk about this. I've chosen to do it today because I've realized that there's been no other time in my life like it. My professional resume says at the top that I am a leadership professional often called upon to navigate high revenue projects and corporate initiatives. That's what I do for a job. So it's not surprising, I think, that I get called upon to do those things in my volunteer life as well. I was asked to participate in a level of leadership that I had never done before. I was excited to embark on something new and meaningful to shape the future of an organization. And little did I know that when I stood before that group of people and I pledged to serve with integrity and love, it would be so tested. Yeah. Whew. Through that process, I learned that difficult changes were necessary for growth and a long-lasting future. Those changes turned out to be very painful for some, including myself. And as the events unfolded, I learned a lot during what was the longest five months of my life. Things I experienced, I was surprised when people lied about me and spread rumors. When they accused me of doing things I didn't do when they turned their backs on me because they felt betrayed. And in the moment, those things were heartbreaking. To feel misunderstood, to feel as if anyone would think that I was purposefully hurtful, to think people that I trusted would betray me like that. And in the spiritual practice and in the days of all of this chaos and sadness, what I learned were, in, in hindsight, I can see it. I can see that I was working through the process. And when I look back on it now, I know this. When people lied about me and spread rumors, it was because they were afraid of change. When they accused me of things that I didn't do, they were simply just not aware of the whole story when they turned their backs on me because they felt betrayed. They just couldn't see the love and respect that I had for them had never changed because they were in that moment. I hesitate to say they didn't take the pause, but I don't know that. I don't know their experience. I just know my experience of them in that time. And how did I navigate all of that? Well, with every spiritual practice I could pull out of the toolbox, that's how I did that. Uh, you know, it was, a, it was an every day, every moment, minute by minute. Sometimes struggle, sometimes little pockets of relief. Having prayer done for me by someone. Just sitting in the silence with someone. But for me, meditation, journal writing, actively practicing forgiveness and even gratitude for what was happening because I knew it was the right path. I believe anything done with love, grace, integrity, compassion, and a willingness to trust in the divine order of all things 
can't be wrong. This three steps back for me was a time of great spiritual growth. I am grateful for it. It was a time to show up, a time to practice and remember that love is all there is. And it's further proof of me that all of this that we do here works. If words control you, that means everyone else can control you. Breathe and allow things to pass. In reflection for that time, for that 20 steps back, if you will, I see it. I see the importance of the breath. I apply it regularly, daily. Patience is a key and I think a spiritual practice. When faced with something or someone so in your face, the breath is paused, is pause, and that's what brings clarity. Even through all of that in the years that followed, the pandemic, the lockdown, two job changes, the transition of loved ones and friends, and so much more, I knew one thing. I knew one thing. I am still learning. And I love it, every minute of it. Most practitioners study somewhere between four and six years before training, or as training for their license. But the process of learning is never done. There's always a new class, a new technique, or a new way to up-level your practice. One of my favorite sayings, oh, did I miss, I missed a slide, I think. If you were here with me last time, this is normal. It's normal. <laughs> Just give me a sec. <laughs> okay, yes. Yes. Yes, that's the one we need. Yes. You can't reach for anything new if your hands are still full of yesterday's junk. That junk from that time period I was telling you about, no longer in my hands. I still see most of these people all the time. I communicate with them, they're on my social media, we have conversations. I love them just as much as I did before. I see the face in God in them every time I look in their eyes. I have no ill will or feelings toward anyone. 20 years ago, I don't think that would have been possible for me. I'd have written y'all out and you'd be gone. Uh, there's just no, but now that's part of learning. That's my learning. And I can say with confidence that that's the truth. Forgiveness is the wonderful way to start with anything that's happening when we're in our three steps back. Because once we let go of hurt, anger, and disappointment, and everything else that we're holding on to, we can let love, compassion, or empathy take over. Hmm. One of the spiritual practices that we're going to talk about today is the labyrinth. There is a labyrinth walk for the autumn equinox today at 11.30 after service, but today, right now, we're going to join together with the labyrinth that you were handed when you walked in today. The labyrinth is a sacred tool that symbolizes life's journey with all of its twists, turns, and challenges, two steps forward and three steps back, no matter where you are in the labyrinth, you can see where you were, and you can see where you're going. It never leaves. You just walk through it. So I invite you to take a moment to sit comfortably and relax your shoulders, close your eyes, or allow them to rest. You may choose to use the printed labyrinth, or you may take the journey in your mind through the meditation instead. Take a deep breath in, and exhale as you let go of any tension or distractions. If 
Feel your body relax, your mind quiet, and your heart open. In this space of stillness, you are safe, supported, and ready to journey inward to a place of deep healing. Breathe in peace. Breathe out tension. Gently bring to mind a situation or a person where forgiveness is needed. Perhaps it's someone who has hurt you. Perhaps it's yourself or something you've been holding on to. Allow it to come into your awareness. When you're ready, allow your finger to follow the curves of the labyrinth. And as you continue your journey in, repeat to yourself, I release, I forgive, I am free. I release, I forgive, I am free. As you move closer to the center of your labyrinth, take a moment to pause when you arrive. This space is the heart of forgiveness. In this stillness, allow yourself to fully give by forgiving and receive forgiveness for yourself. I love, I forgive, I am free. I love, I forgive, I am free. When you feel ready, begin to trace your way out of the labyrinth. Take with you peace and forgiveness. Just as the path inward helped you release and let go, the path out helps you realize a lighter and freer heart. Affirm for yourself, I walk in peace, I walk in love, I forgive and am forgiven. I walk in peace, I walk in love. I forgive and am forgiven.
When finished, I invite you to close your eyes and have a few moments of reflection. Express gratitude for all that has unfolded for you in this moment. Knowing that in place of forgiveness, we have love and gratitude and a way forward, releasing anything that we're holding on to and moving with ease and grace into the next step into the next step on that spiritual journey upward. I welcome you back to this space by taking a deep breath in. And release. I know that setbacks are a natural part of life, but I understand they're temporary. They can be transformed into something new and beautiful through spiritual practice. Meditation is the one we probably talk about the most because it takes longer, but affirmative prayer is probably the top of our list. <laughs> That's what we do. So knowing that meditation is just one way, practitioners have a lot of other things in their toolbox as well. Whew. Practitioners are skilled in the practices that help you realize whatever you're looking for is within reach because it resides within you right now. We've already done a meditation today, but there's so much more to learn and so much more to see. Some of the ones on the top of the list are affirmative prayer, working with affirmations, and visioning. With affirmative prayer, we are blessed to get that experience every Sunday right here. You also have the opportunity to get prayer from a practitioner right across the hall after service. It's quite different when you sit with someone and that prayer is for you. This form of prayer is rooted in the belief that we are all co-creators of our life experience. We have skin in the game. We are one with the divine and that our thoughts, beliefs, and words have the power to shape our reality. The five steps that you may hear when a prayer is done up here are recognition or the acknowledging that the presence of the divine is right where we are. Unification, affirming oneness, our oneness with that divine. Realization, where we state what our desired outcome is and what we are looking for in the present tense, as if it is already done. Thanksgiving, of course, gratitude, another spiritual practice. And finally, release, letting go and trusting that whatever we have stated for ourselves is already done. Through affirmative prayer, we align with the law and recognize infinite possibilities for the highest good are ours all the time. I like to think of affirmations as mini prayers. Um, they're quick, they're easy. Little reminders that keep us moving toward our goals, that keep us centered in our relationship with oneness, in our relationship with spirit. For example, a three steps back moment 
might generate an affirmation like this. I know that this challenge is a stepping stone toward my greater good. I am guided, supported, and empowered to move forward with grace and strength. Those reminders help us remember that pause, what we can control when we feel like we might not be able to control anything. And finally, visioning. A spiritual practice used to gain insight, guidance, and inspiration from source. If you've never practiced visioning before, watch for the next opportunity to do so. It is not like any other spiritual practice. It is a direct connection to spirit. It is an opportunity to get the download, to have your questions answered. And some of that might be for, in, you might hear words, you might hear shapes, there might be colors. There's a divine flow of wisdom available to you right then. Here at CSL GLV, we teach classes and workshops to help you discover your next steps forward. How you choose to participate in the spiritual journey is completely up to you. I can't drag you in from the parking lot to take a class on journaling. I can't force you to show up on Sundays and get prayer from a practitioner. All we can do is encourage you and show you by leading by example that these things are available for each one of you. And if you feel like there's a place in your life where spirit might not be showing up the way you'd like, there's a way out of that too. How many of you in this room have had a practitioner session? How many don't know what a practitioner session is? Well, this is one of the most powerful tools that practitioners have. A practitioner session is an opportunity whose primary purpose is to help you align your thoughts, beliefs, and consciousness with spiritual principles and practices in order for you to heal, grow, and manifest your highest good. It is a one-on-one -on -one session. Practitioners serve as your spiritual guide to help you work through challenges or gain clarity around an event or circumstance and to deepen your own spiritual practice as part of that healing. The practitioner takes the opportunity then to listen deeply. We'll ask you powerful open-ended questions that lead you to your own insights and awareness and will help you use the power of affirmative, affirmative prayer to shift your consciousness. Also during that practitioner session, the practitioner will share spiritual tools and principles to help you take charge of your inner and outer worlds. Most importantly, the practitioner remembers the truth and that the work done can have powerful impacts on your life. It is a time of sacred oneness. In the spirit of expansion and healing, I'd like to offer a limited number of free practitioner sessions to those interested in having the experience. Since the pandemic, I've done very few, and I'm really looking forward to participating in that with members of the community again. So if you have a challenge or an issue, if you're looking for clarity in an area of your life, or simply just want to open yourself up to a greater spiritual experience, can see me after service, or you can leave your contact information with Kaylee. This is, a, this is a gift for me to participate with you. There are a few things I'd like you to remember as we leave today. When we know better, we do better. This is a phrase I often use in my own internal forgiveness work. Do I think I could have done that better? Probably. Do I look at it later and maybe feel badly because it wasn't the experience I wanted to convey? Possibly. But when I know better, I do better. And if I feel like there's something else I need to try or understand or experience, I do it. Take a class, attend a workshop, read a different book, join a sacred circle, a book study, Create something new. 
Be open to it. Learn, learn, learn. And then practice, practice, practice. What you, practice what you know and develop your own routine. I'm very corporate, corporate oriented. I have a job that I have <laughs> hundreds of uh, spreadsheets, 35 people report to me every day. It is often chaotic. I appreciate lists. I make them often. I love to check them off and feel like I've accomplished something. So this is my daily to-do. I invite you to give it a try. Woo. Here it is. Every day, a physical win. Just get up and walk. Do yoga, garden, go outside, just do something. Intellectual win. Read, learn, create something. Call someone. Ask them a question. Have a conversation. Just check in. And spiritual. Journal, meditation, gratitude, kindness. There's always room. Always. And remember what's important. I heard something years ago that I think about often. Every day the world will drag you by the hand yelling, this is important, this is important, this is important. You need to worry about this and this and this. And each day it's up to you to pull your hand back Put it over your heart and say, no, this is what's important. This is what's important. And finally, some encouragement from our founder, Ernest Holmes. From Creative Mind and Success. The individual who has the most power is the one who has the greatest realization of divine presence. And to whom this means the most is an active principle of his life. We all need more backbone and less wishbone. There is something which waits only our recognition to spring into being, bringing with it all the power of the universe. That power is already within you. It's just waiting for your permission. So I say go. Go and set it free. Thank you. Mm -hmm.